today on the latest with Maya, I am very excited to be having a conversation with social media sensation Tommy Winkler. Tommy, thank you so much for joining me. I'm very excited to be talking with you. Anytime. Thank you, Maya. Yeah, social media sensation. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hyping me up. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's get started. Uh, my first question for you is, what is the biggest challenge in creating content for your social media? <sighs> The biggest challenge, it's it's definitely which, you know, a lot of people, you know, ask me, like, you know, kind of how do you do it? Or, you know, how do you grow a following? It's the consistency. I mean, as you know, it's like after you've done so many of these interviews, and um, you just have to be consistent, pretty much every single day, you know, coming up with ideas, creating the content, editing, it's really like the grind. It it doesn't stop and you just got to keep up with it while, you know, you have all these other things going on in your life. And it's it's something where that's when it becomes a big challenge is I can I keep the consistency even when other things are going on in my life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um do you ever feel pressure to create? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I put so much pressure on myself and, you know, especially even as you grow, you're following more and more and more the pressure, you know, it grows, it grows more and more and more. So that is one thing that, you know, I like to try and lay off the pressure, but I almost don't want to, because it's, you know, I have people out there, you know, waiting for my next post um, and doing something cool for them. So it's like the pressure should be there to keep creating content, even better content every single time. Yeah. Um, do you have a specific process for creating? And is it uh, very time consuming? Yeah, yeah. My, my process is... Um, it's normally I take a suggestion from my followers asking me to do a food challenge specifically like um, in the beginning it was oh eat well just something basic eat McDonald's for the whole day. Uh, so I would find someone commenting that take that comment go eat McDonald's for the whole day or but those ones aren't too time consuming other than having to go to McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, <laughs> dinner. Um, it's more of the ones where it's getting creative, like eat foods in the shape of emojis. So maybe getting a burger and having it look perfectly like the emoji or a burrito and having it look like the emoji and then eating that. So when it, I have to take time to set up the food for the video, that's when it normally takes up more time for you know the process. Oh, yeah, that that sounds um slightly stressful. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to get creative. And then the pressure gets put on me too, where it's like, what? Oh, you know, the tomato is slightly off on the burger. It's not doesn't really look like the, you know, the, the emoji. And I'm just that's where the pressure kicks in too. It's I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's fun though. I love it. That's good. Yeah. Um, so I know that when I'm filming something for TikTok or any of my social media channels, uh, there are days where it takes me several takes to get it right. Um, do you have a funny story about one of your outtakes that would make it on your blooper reel? That's a good question. I get that. I get that all the time too. And I should create a blue blooper reel. It, it normally comes into, um, um, <laughs> one time I was filming, I think I was eating cheesecake from the cheesecake factory for the whole day. And oh. literally I went to take a bite. I try to get the full item in the frame. So not just like you know, having it on my fork, but I like to get the whole item on. And I think I was balancing the cheesecake on my fork and I went to take a bite, falls off and it lands directly on my phone. Um, So I'm filming with another phone, but then I had to 
I had a separate phone um, set of just, just on the table in front of me. Cheesecake falls right on top of my phone. It was like chocolate everywhere, all over my screen. All, and I had it on video. Unfortunately, it fell out of the frame, but then I showed it. It was in a YouTube video. Um, so there's that. And then my intros, uh, my introductions where I, I read off the comments, um, you know, whatever it is, eat pizza for the whole day or this is going to taste delicious. Sometimes I mess up the intros and that becomes a blooper. And, and those are more, more of the common mistakes, but yeah, food can get messy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I know when I'm filming like a video, my dog likes the spotlight. So whenever my, my mom usually ha uh, films it for me and, um, when she's like, okay, ready? My dog hears that and just comes running. <laughs> <laughs> Dog's ready. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she is. So that, yeah, so that's most of the bloopers for me where she's just like trying to like eat something <laughs> that oh. I'm holding or she climbs onto my lap. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to take the spotlight from you. Yeah, she of is. Yeah. That's adorable. Yeah. <laughs> um, so since you are known as the food guy, what food do you think best represents your personality? Ooh, that is a very, very interesting question. <laughs> I'd like to say, hmm. I'm probably leaning towards, you know, a nice, you know, authentic, you know, a nice good taco, you know, I like to say it, it, you know, it appears from the outside, it can look, you know, perfect with, you know, you can see each layer of the ingredients in the taco. And that's kind of like my final product of a video. But then what people don't see is kind of on the inside, it's like all chaos of all the ingredients in a taco of like, you know, meat, cheese, tomato, lettuce, whatever's in there. And I would like to, you know, I, I would have to say a taco because things, you know, they may look good from the outside, but on the inside where all the action happens, where I do all the editing, um, you know, anything that I would have to do like introductions or having to drive, you know, four hours for a video or flying across the world for a video. It's just kind of more of the, the chaos that people don't see and the effort that goes into it is all within the taco. I, I, I like that. And I love tacos. Of course. Yeah. Oh, well, well, I actually, I, I like that explanation of a taco. I think that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And uh, originally with the, the food guy name, it didn't uh, start off. Originally, I was the king of crunch for about the first year of me making content. And I just picked up on, um, I was king of crunch because I would eat crunchy foods. And I had like a eating crunchy foods for the whole day, almost like ASMR type of videos. Uh, where I, and those where those videos just performed super well, and I was just like, you know what, I'll be the king of crunch. But then it changed when people started recognizing me in public, and um, which is absolutely unreal to think that you know people see my videos, and then when they see me in person, they'll come up, ask for a photo, autograph, whatever it is. It's nice to meet everyone, and just a completely different world opened up when that started happening. But people started calling me. They're like, oh are you the food guy on TikTok? Food guy, the food guy? Are you, do you, do you eat all the food? And I was like, you know, maybe I should change my name to the food guy. Cause when, every time someone comes up to me, they're like, are you the food guy on TikTok? And so that came in, that, that name's coming up on about a year now. I think it was last October. I, I started to identify myself as the food guy online and um, it's been awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you were competing on a cooking show, what would be your secret weapon to creating a, a winning dish? I'd have to say my secret weapon in a cooking show, you know, I'm trying to get better at cooking. I'm still, I still consider myself a beginner when it comes to cooking, um, <laughs> So I would, I would try my best, you know, I, I like tasting the food more. 
of course. You know, lo <laughs> yeah. Love eating the food. Uh, but my secret weapon, um, I'm a big, big sauce guy. I love sauces to go with food. So whatever I would create, maybe I would do like some kind of hibachi plate where I have, you know, a different assortment of meats. Maybe it's like, uh, a, maybe it's a surf and turf where I just have like steak, chicken and shrimp, but then I also have fried rice with it. And then I pair it with a good yum, yum sauce. I've been obsessed with yum, yum sauce lately. You have to try it, Maya. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think I've ever, I have <laughs> never tried that. So it's like, a, it's like a, it's like a meat sauce. So it goes good with steak, chicken, shrimp, well, like, like I listed, but it's called yum, yum sauce. And I've, I've truly, I've been obsessed with it lately. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, I'll have to write that down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that would, you know, give me the win in the cooking competition. <laughs> yeah you could be the judge my mom. okay yeah I'll make I, you can try it okay yeah that sounds good yeah. <laughs> um so what three words do you think best describe you Ooh, three words um number one it's got to be hungry i <laughs> i feel like i am always hungry always down to eat something <laughs> Number two, uh, I would say um, confident. I'm, you know, I'm very confident in the, just when it comes to, you know, putting myself out there online, there is obviously, as you know, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to put a hate comment or um, be negative. And I, I like to keep myself as, you know, confident as possible. Yes, I'm not gonna lie. Some comments, you know, they do get to me over time, especially on some videos where they're flooded with just negative and I, I try not to read them at all but it's tough too when I use comments for my videos so I have to go through my comment section to find them yeah. um, but I, I am very you know confident person in myself and that helps me you know overlook and not give attention to those negative comments and then number three hmm I would have to say a tough one number three I feel like number three is always the hardest maybe I'll go with I'll go with creative oh, I, I like that <laughs> I love I love to be creative obviously you know creating content online um I like to do very little things in my videos that maybe people just watch and glance over like sometimes in instead of licking ice cream I'll I'll bite ice cream which <laughs> the people yeah. are like, what is that? And, you know, that's kind of like the creativity I like to put forth into my videos is these unique, uninteresting ways of like you eating something in a different way that's not normal. Um, like when I eat oranges, which I actually do this and I've done this growing up, I eat the orange peel with it. Oh. I know it's weird. It's weird, Maya, <laughs> trust me. You, you can judge, it's all right. Um, so, I mean, getting creative in that sense of like, what's like a very unique way I can eat this food that, you know, kind of just separates myself and adds like creativity to the video, or maybe when I'm cooking food, I'll, you know, put an extra ingredient for the video and it just makes it, you know, more creative and more unique for the viewer to watch. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um. So what is something people are always surprised to learn about you? Ooh, what is something people are surprised to learn about you? Um, probably the, the fact that I, you know, is this like if they know nothing about me or is this if someone's like watches my content and then uh, learns something about me? Um, you know, I actually hadn't thought about that. So whichever one. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll go with, yeah. we'll go with if, uh, we'll go with, we'll go with the people who watch me just so it's, you know, a little more personal. Um, cause otherwise I was going to say, you know, me creating content online, it's a very, you know, unique thing that a lot of people don't see, but, uh, personally, I, I am a big, uh, golfer. So. Oh. I played golf um, at a collegiate level at UW Parkside uh, for a couple years. Oh, 
that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm big into the golf world, and I have a couple of friends. Um, their names are uh, Danny and Steven Sinicki, who make golf content online. And sometimes I appear in some of those videos with them, and you know, play around to golf, and, and I, I truly enjoy it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, what in your life brings you the most joy? <laughs> um. Oh, it's it's pretty simple, honestly. Just food. <laughs> food brings me the most joy. If I, you know, when I smell, have you ever just been like going for a walk outside, and all of a sudden you you smell, you know, someone cooking or like a barbecue, and you're just like, oh, that smells good. That's that's the type of thing yeah. that just brings me joy. So the smell of food, obviously the taste, um, just traveling around trying new things, um, which is food, of course. Yeah, but. It, it's got to be food. And I mean, other than the food, the, you know, putting the content out there, I love creating a video and then publishing it. That's all I want to do. If I could publish and create 10, 20 videos in a day, if I had enough time to do that, I, I so would do that. I just love creating content. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually editing at like everything actually kind of causes me a lot of stress so I have um like my sister love is a film um major at school um at college and so I have her edit by things for the me because she yeah because she loves doing that so I was like okay I don't want that extra stress yeah. so I'll let yeah, I'm like, I'll let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's super smart. I know editing can be very tedious and it just after a while you're just like, oh, I have to edit this and everything. I, I get that. I completely understand. <laughs> yeah. Um uh so I am pop culture obsessed and I go in stages of shows that I cannot stop watching. Um, <laughs> what show are you currently obsessed with? Oh, what show? Currently? Yeah. Um, there's a couple that I'm re-watching. Uh, so one of them is Friends. Ooh. I love Friends. Me too. <laughs> Great show. Yeah. Um, uh, and then another one too that I'm watching right now is um, Modern Family. That one's been, that one's been funny. <laughs> I like. Comedy. And then there's obviously New Girl, The Office, just yeah. kind of like the classics that you can rewatch or you can watch any yeah. episode anytime. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Um. Oh, so well, Friends is one of my comfort shows, so I watch that a lot. And there's. I have a lot of comfort shows, so I like switch between them. But yeah. uh, right now, I'm watching the show Grimm. Oh, um, I've not seen it. Yeah, I um, I just started watching it a couple months ago. I'm on season five, uh, and there's six seasons, so I'm oh, like yeah. just almost one. done. Yeah, so I'm just watching that uh or I've been watching that uh like every chance I get um it's so good <laughs> um and then I actually uh just started watching yesterday um a show called the tomorrow people um, oh, I've heard that one I've heard about that one yeah, I actually, I have never heard of it before, but it's with a lot of actors I, that I love. So I was like, I'm going to try watching this. Can't go so, wrong. Well, yeah. sweet. I got some Maya, Maya recommendations. I'll have to go check those out. Grim and Tomorrow People. Yeah, they're both really good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what song best describes your life right now? Ooh, ooh, what song best describes my life right now? Um, oh my gosh, I don't even know if, I'm trying to think. So my girlfriend right now with 
Taylor Swift and the whole Eras tour has been on a Taylor Swift craze and and she's she's put me on so I've been really digging Taylor Swift the last like since she started the tour the last I don't know, six seven months um that that she's you know re-released her albums and everything and uh so I'm honestly been listening to a lot of Taylor Swift lately I would have to say this may be not be a song that describes you know my life right now uh, and I can't really think of one that would, so I'm just gonna go with favorite song. But I'll, I'll do "I Did Something Bad" by Taylor Swift. Oh, I love it's that song. Great song from her Reputation yeah. album. I I yeah. love it. So it may not, yeah. you know, define like my life right now, but just a favorite song yeah. for them. Yeah, I um, yeah, I uh, Taylor Swift is one of my favorite singers. So Queen. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, um, yeah, I was trying, as I was writing that question, I was trying to figure out it. I was like, this is a hard question because I, it is a hard like, question. <laughs> yeah, a great question, too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, so who has had the biggest impact on the person you have become? Ooh. Um, so I guess, of course, go to answer would have to be my parents, uh, and as well as my brother. Um, but just growing up to becoming, you know, the person I am today, it's definitely due to my parents. They, they both raised me very well. I was super fortunate enough to be given, you know, the opportunity of, you know, going to, going to school and um, being able to, you know, have an iPhone where I can uh, create my my content and be able to benefit off of opportunities that were, you know, given to me like that, just growing up and, you know, teaching me, obviously, all the, all the, you know, just the parts of just hard work and uh, being consistent and never giving up. And that's just really comes from my parents. And then my brother, um, he's probably the biggest reason why I am uh, a social media, you know, influencer. Now he's the one who got me into it. In it was like my junior year of high school, he wanted to start a YouTube channel and just do like funny vlogs, like prank wars, pranking each other, um, some different challenges. And it was his idea. He got me into it. I was just super uncomfortable in front of a camera. Didn't really know how to act. I, you know, stumble on my words, wouldn't know how to talk at all. But he was, you know, a huge role model in that sense where he's like, let's make a video and was able to just talk on camera, show me the way into being a social media, um, being a social media presence and having a personnel online. So uh, I have to give, yeah, a big shout out to him for, you know, breaking that barrier and making me feel comfortable in front of a camera. And then, and then I stopped, uh, we stopped making the vlogs when we went off to college. And then it was like my freshman year of college, I started TikTok and that's where it started off. Oh, cool. I love yeah. that. So yeah, the family, the family has been there since day one. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So I love inspiring um, and motivational quotes and always love ending my shows with uh, one of with a quote and so this week the quote that is inspiring me is from uh one of my favorite shows which is actually another comfort show of mine it's called perception um and the quote is every now and then we need to break with the past and take the leap into uncharted territory uh, I love yeah Make yourself uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. Um, and I was wondering, is there a motto or quotation that inspires you? There is one that I, I reference in my head um quite a bit. It is uh I don't know who who said it or who it's from, and these aren't like these may not be the exact like full quote but it's like, do what a clock does and don't stop running. 
you know, just like, just keep going like a clock, a clock never stops, you know, just that kind of where my, you know, consistency motivation comes from is like, just like, don't stop, keep going. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to remember that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah. Pretty, pretty simple. Yeah. Just do what a clock does. Don't stop. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me, Tommy. I loved our conversation and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me. And I just want to say that, you know, what you've done is truly inspirational um, from, you know, starting and beating cancer and then starting up your own talk show and just, you know, you're doing exactly what my my quote was you're you're not stopping you're keep you're still going I love it thank you like thank you oh, thank you so much that that means a lot of course thank you and uh that's a wrap on this edition of the latest with Maya yeah so thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much Maya thank you for having me thank you so much